you've just received your first ever coffee setup. Maybe you got a nice new batch brewer that's going to be used every morning and then forgotten about every night. Or a great new grinder that might get a little too chaffy or a little too oily. Or even a fancy new espresso machine with parts and components that's going to need some regular maintenance. Here are my top 8 tips and gear to keep your coffee equipment and station squeaky clean. Now this is your disclaimer that everything I'm going through here today I have personally used and am using on a frequent basis without issue. As with any machine that requires regular cleaning and maintenance, do refer to your manufacturer's instructions if it came with one as results may vary device to device. So with that being said, here are my top 8 tips and gear to keep your coffee station clean and your brews tasty. Number 1 is Kafiza. This stuff is worth its weight in gold and can be used to clean practically anything that touches coffee. If you have any cups, mugs, pots, and accessories that have been stained with coffee residue, this stuff just works. For mugs and carafes, I throw a small amount of Kafiza powder into it alongside some hot water and let it sit overnight. The next morning, I give everything a thorough rinse with soap and hot water. And it looks almost brand new again. This stuff is also regularly used for espresso machines that require back flushing, and even for accessories like puck screens, baskets, and portafilters. Regularly cleaning your gear is going to not only help retain your machine's longevity, but also ensure your coffee stays tasty. Number two is preventative care, specifically for espresso machines and automatic brewers. While there are ways to clean up residue and lime scale buildup, you can also minimize the chance of it occurring to begin with. Now the first method would be to use a puck screen. This is specific for espresso machines. It's essentially a little disc of metal that sits above your bed of coffee within the portafilter filter and is supposedly said to A. Help better evenly distribute water, but mainly B. Help keep your machine's group head nice and clean. There are different varieties of these screens nowadays, from paper filters to thin ones that are magnetized to these traditional thicker screens. I've been using these screens for years, and my machines have always stayed looking squeaky clean and producing delicious coffee. And speaking of delicious coffee, the second preventative care method will not only help keep your espresso machine or automatic brewer clean, but also improve your coffee at the same time. And that is with the help of the sponsor of today's video, Third Wave Water. It's no secret that good coffee needs good water, but machines themselves can also benefit from water optimized for brewing. Both water that is too hard or too soft can be bad for your machine. Third wave water streamlines that process with the perfect blend of materials to prevent the buildup of scale and prevent corrosion. And you can even pick and choose different mineral packets for both your brew method and coffee roast preferences. I've been using third wave water in combination with a reverse osmosis water filter, and that's one variable in the brewing process I no longer have to worry about. Head over to thirdwavewater.com slash itschris to get 10% off your first purchase. Once again, thanks to third wave water for sponsoring this video. And number three. RDT, also known as the Ross Droplet Technique, is a method of spritzing your coffee beans with a touch of water to prevent as much chaff and static buildup. It's an easy way to minimize the chaff and mess that comes with grinding coffee. I've basically been doing this with every grinder I've used for years now because it really helps cut down on the mess. However, some grinder manufacturers recommend not doing this with their grinders, while others will even include a spray bottle to encourage it. Of course, only do this if you're comfortable with regularly maintaining your grinder. RDT, while helpful, can also become problematic if you don't routinely clean your grinder. A good set of brushes will help brush off that coffee residue and keep both your grinder and worktop clean. Plus, there have been some recent new information about RDT from Chris Hendon that I'll leave linked down below. It's a very interesting read, and both James Hoffman and Lance Hedrick have excellent videos on the topic. Number four, dealing with coffee inevitably leads to spills, stains, and grounds getting everywhere. My advice, invest in multiple sets of cleaning brushes and a mini vacuum. If you own any kind of coffee grinder, you need to regularly clean it. Oils and coffee residue can quickly build up, no matter what grinder you have. Simple hand grinders are going to need some maintenance, and even fancy $4,000 electric grinders are going to need some maintenance. A combination of cleaning brushes and a mini vacuum helps get into hard to reach places. My coffee workbench has a conveniently placed outlet and USB charging ports where I can easily keep my vacuum charged up and ready. Number five, towels and rags. This might also seem like a no-brainer, but I've been guilty of using the same rag for multiple days in a row. Having a large stack makes it easier and more hygienic to stick to using one per day and tossing them in the wash afterwards. I particularly like these microfiber ones I got off Amazon almost four years ago, and they've held up just fine and come in a fairly large stack for not too much money. I've also been using these tools from Artpresso that makes it easy to keep my steam wand drip tray and group head clean. 
The group head cleaner even includes a flathead bit to unscrew shower screens and a mirror to check the cleanliness. Coming in at number six, rubber bar mats. This is probably an item I get asked about all the time. It has been a great item to keep all the grounds and mess contained. I've used these on and off because sometimes I like the cleaner aesthetic without the black bar mats on top, but generally they stay on because it just helps so much with keeping things clean. I've gone through a few different styles of these and have to say that this one I have here is by far the nicest and thickest mat I've purchased yet. They also come in a wide variety of sizes, so you can pick and choose to use them however you want. They can be washed in the sink very easily and help contain coffee grounds, spills, and even milk residue. Whenever I go to do a deep clean on my grinders or tools, I usually just use one of these mats and brush off all the grounds onto it, so it's super easy to contain the mess. And at number seven, blind baskets. These typically come with most espresso machine purchases and are meant to be combined with either Kafiza or manufacturer recommended cleaner. I like to use these by putting a tablet or small amount of Kafiza powder in them, locking the portafilter into the group head, letting it run for about 10 seconds, letting it flush out, and then repeating that for a total of five times. Then I'll clean out the basket, give the group a scrub, and repeat flushing again with just plain water. This process might vary from machine to machine, and always refer to your manufacturer's instructions for maintenance steps, but generally I found this to work on most E61 or 58mm group machines that I've tried. One tool I've liked to use that's almost like a super blind basket is the Weber Spring, which essentially pushes 200 mils of water through the group and gives your machine a really, really deep clean. At least, it feels like it does. Now this tool and process is only for 58mm machines that utilize a pump and back flush system for cleaning and maintenance, and I would check the Weber site for compatibility before purchasing. And finally, at number 8 on the list, my last tip is to create a schedule or routine. Much like your coffee preparation, cleaning and care for your gear also needs a routine. Now on my personal to-do list, starting at the most frequent item is grinder cleaning. And this one is a little specific to the Weber EG1 that I have here, as there are a few different levels of cleaning this grinder. For the daily cleaning, I simply remove the burr carrier and give everything a quick brush. The entire thing snaps back together with magnets very easily. And here at home, we also use the Mocha Master Batch Brewer on the daily, so I also like to give this a soapy water rinse every night. Personally, I run an average of about 10 through 12 shots through my espresso machine per week, and I generally back flush about once a month, or sometimes a little bit sooner if I've been pulling a lot more shots for testing or video purposes. Alongside back flushing the machine, I'll also soak the portafilter, disassembling the spouts if possible, puck screens, baskets, shower screens, and gaskets all in a container with some hot water and kafiza. And probably once a month or so, I'll go and open up whatever grinder I'm using and do a deep clean there. Although, this has changed a little with the EG1 specifically since it's such a lower tension grinder to begin with. I've actually opened this up fully just one time so far, and even then had less than a gram of retained grounds. When I do go and do a full clean of a grinder, I'll also do a deep clean of the rest of the smaller items on the coffee bar, and generally try to give everything a good wipe. And with that, those are my top 8 tips and gear to hopefully help you keep your coffee equipment clean and your coffee tasting delicious. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, feel free to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and if you have any other cleaning tips that you would recommend, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below, and I will see you in the next one.